after you've done all you can. You just stand. I don't care. I don't care what the circumstance is. I don't care what you are facing. Does not matter how difficult the trial may be. It does not matter how difficult the situation may be. Tell the Lord I'm going to stand. You don't know what this week you're going to face, Abel Shaha. But Lord, I'm not going in the town. Our little granddaughter Capri. It wasn't nobody in the house but Capri and I. And I put her in her chair, her little swing. I said, now, baby, you got to be quiet. Entertain yourself for the next couple hours. I was on that phone. I was in that conversation for over two hours. Telling this man that you cannot give up. And the Lord spoke to me, he said, you need to let the church know they cannot give up. You may not see any results. Door after door slammed in your face. Relationship not healed. Body not healed. Finance, finance not fixed. Nobody understands me. I don't have any friends. This, that, and the other. But the word of God tells us we still got to stand. And that pastor friend of mine is in his pulpit this morning. You may be seated. It's time to stand firm. That's my subject today, obviously. There are commands in the scriptures that are repeated many, many times. And the call for us to stand firm is one of those commandments. One of those commands should I say? And that command to stand firm stand, is, appears all throughout God's holy word. And I'm going to talk in scenarios today or parables. Not Jesus, but Jesus used parables and they work so well. I'm going to give a couple of parables perhaps. One in particular to help with the additional understanding of what it means to stand. May not raise my voice no higher than this, but because I want you to understand, I want you to get this today. Week after week, it's a different situation. We are living in times that are second to none. What we are experiencing on a weekly basis is just unbelievable. Hurt, pain, disaster, sickness, disease, pestilence mischievousness or past hatred in high places. Our government, I just don't know. <laughs> and it's easy for us to get off track. But I want to talk about a tree. I'm going to get to the scripture in just a moment. The root hairs of a tree reach way down and it sucks the water and the nutrients from the soil that the tree needs to live. Just the other day, I brought it to my wife's attention. 
I just noticed it the other day. I went outside and, and uh, I didn't plant, I think I told some Elder Minor, I didn't plant near the flowers we usually did, do. do. Uh, just didn't have the time to fool with them, but there's four that I have to water every day. And I walked by this particular tree, I think it was Elder uh, Minister Fitzgerald I was talking about, talking to. And I walked by this tree every day, paid no attention to it, paid a bit of attention to it. I walked by the tree, and when I came around and, and turned around to make sure, you know, when you water a plant, you got to make sure that the water's a hanging plant that is coming back out of the bottom. Um, and I did that, and I happened to look up, and I stepped back. The main tree in my front yard has totally turned brown. And, and I told her, I said, I looked as I was walking across the house the other day. I looked out the window, and I said, wow, fall sure is coming early this year. And didn't I just say that to myself, fall's coming early. And when I said that, didn't think no more about it. Then later on, I said, but it's August. It's too early for fall. Still didn't think nothing about it till I turned around and looked at the tree. The whole tree, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get someone out there to look at it. I believe the whole tree has died. There is not a green, and it's a maple tree. There is not a green leaf on that tree. I'm telling you all to tell you to say this that the, the, the root hairs of a tree go way down in the soil to suck out water and nutrients. And evidently, the tree was not getting the nutrients it needed to keep it green and vibrant. And those roots, they cling firmly to the soil so that they can better absorb the water and the nutrients. And by doing this, the roots also, get this, the roots Hold the soil in place and protect it from erosion. So standing firm provides protection from destruction and erosion. What is erosion? Uh, you learned that in middle school, but in case you forgot, or learned that in grade, uh, 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 primary, elementary. Erosion is the process by which something is diminished or destroyed by degrees. To eat into or to eat away by slow destruction of substance or to deteriorate. To deteriorate. Christ once told his disciples in a parable saying something like this. Luke 6. 48 and 9. He says, he is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it for it was founded on the rock. The rock, the rock, the rock, the rock, the rock. We have all heard, I build my house on a solid rock. I build my house on the rock of my foundation, uh, uh, the rock of my salvation. We have always correlated the rock with being something strong. But who's protecting the rock? The rock has to sit on soil. And if the soil around the rock does not, is not protected, the erosion will occur, and before you know it, the rock will crumble. Are y'all following me? I don't mean to be re real deep this morning. I don't, I, deep preachers get on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> but I want to ask you the question, why would someone build a house without a foundation? Perhaps they would build it to save time and avoid the hard work of preparing the stone. Possibly because the waterfront property or the waterfront scenery looks better to them. It's more attractive. It's more has more of a social status. Perhaps they want to build, uh, they want to join their friends who have already settled in sandy areas. Maybe because they haven't heard about the violent storms that are coming. Because they have discounted the reports. They have not listened to the reports. A storm is coming.
I mean, when it pops up on my phone, there's a thunderstorm in the area, I pay attention. Some of y'all don't. I ain't going to come here. You don't never know. Pay attention to your surroundings, what's going on. Maybe because they haven't heard about the storm, they are, they've discounted the reports. Whatever their reason, those with no foundation are short-sighted and they will be sorry. Stand firm now. It's time to stand firm. Obeying God is like building a house on a strong, solid foundation that stands firm when storms come. And when life is calm, our foundations don't seem to matter up very much. In this pandemic, now I read the other day, I don't want to see no show of hands, I heard another stimulus check got sent out. A fourth stimulus check. Yeah, they said it's supposed to hit you, you by the 19th. Oh, I got your attention there. You woke up. You're going to get happy over the stimulus, but you, uh, 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 what about get happy over Jesus? Don't clap now. You should have clapped earlier. You didn't wake up till I said stimulus. You think that stimulus is giving you a calm life. And so when things are calm, you don't worry about your foundation. But this time next year when all the stimulus have stopped. Because it's going to stop. And this time next year when the IRS is doing audits on you to see, did you really deserve it? Some of those people didn't got all that PPP money. You gonna pay for that. Don't be so naive to think they're not gonna come back and audit you. They're gonna check you out. When they come to check you out, what kind of foundation will you be on in? When crisis come, our foundations are tested. And be sure that your life is built on solid foundation of knowing and trusting Jesus Christ. We are told to build our spiritual houses on a rock. And without question, we understand that that rock is God the Father and the Son. And as we build, we must, must never forget that what we build upward and visibly visible must be constructed from quality materials. Is your spiritual walk built on quality? Are those quality materials of your spiritual life built on a solid foundation? The chief cornerstone. Any of you, let me help you with this cornerstone thing. Do you know that every building has a cornerstone? And if that cornerstone is not placed in there properly, that whole building is in jeopardy. Am I right? Any, any construction people in there? Can you all agree with me? If that cornerstone is not, if it's crooked, your building is in jeopardy. If it's got chips in it, your building is in jeopardy. The cornerstone is absolutely essential to the sound and the quality of the building that is, it is uh, 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 supporting. Ephesians 2 and 20 tells us, and I'm reading from the King James Version, and are built up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Is he the chief cornerstone in your life or is Shakita your cornerstone? Is he the chief cornerstone of your life or is Sequata your quarter? Who is your chief cornerstone? 
in your life. It better be Christ Jesus. Because only he can support all your mess. Only he can support all of your craziness. The chief court, it didn't say the building had to be a good building. But a chief cornerstone will support you. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 3 and 11 tells us this. For our foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. But, 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 but. We can never forget that the foundation itself has to be maintained over time. I feel a, a war cry. The foundation has to be maintained over time. And every once in a while, you just got to do something to help your foundation become a little more structurally sound. Can I get y'all to help me with the war cry? That just popped in my head. The Lord said, do the war cry. Because when we do this war cry, somebody's foundation is getting ready to get strengthened. Pull your mask down, son, and do it for me. Come on, war cry. Oh, oh, oh. right now destruction is all around your feet your foundation is gone yeah you come to church you clap you may even shout you may even think of a tongue every once in a while but I want you to understand it's not God or his power that has eroded because he simply cannot erode. Rather, it's him as our foundation. Why? Because we have allowed it to go unmaintained. What have you done to protect your foundation? What have you done to make sure that your cornerstone is right and in place? What have you done to make it from one week to the next week free? And set free from all of life's ups and downs. What have you done? What have you done to maintain your foundation? 
We may appear to be weathering the storm, but underneath our foundation is being eaten away. And one day we'll slide off into the ocean or crumble beneath the weight of what we have built. Oh, I want you to know you got us. It's time to stand firm. What is spiritual erosion? Spiritual erosion is slow, silent, and subtle. Like physical erosion, it starts unaware. And the daily familiarity of our routine, it keeps us from seeing it in ourselves or even those that are close to us. You have started to erode and you don't even know it. You have started to go into a crumbling formation and you don't even know it. Spiritual erosion, it creeps up on you and you don't even know it. Why do you think you slip and cuss? Why do you think you get solace in a drink rather than a thank you Jesus? Why do you think you got to go get a blunt to get you to calm down and other get on your knees and pray? Oh, you may not like it, but you are eroding. Why would you rather throw a fist than throw up a praise? Why would you rather walk away from getting help when there's help at the altar? It's Spiritual erosion, spiritual erosion, and it creeps up on you and you don't even know it. Preachers erode. Missionaries erode. Choir members erode. Deacons erode. Church mothers erode. Children erode. Altar workers erode. Evangelists erode. Ushers erode. Saints of God erode. But oh, I want to be on firm foundation. Oh, my God, my God. A person will usually keep doing the same things they've always done when they are in erosion. They come to church asking people how they're, how was your week? Oh, someone, oh, I don't want you to look at nobody funny today, but if someone came up to you, come here, Brother Jeremiah. I ain't trying to throw shade, but come here. <laughs> how was your week? We ask, how was your week? And, and, and I'm asking you, and I'm just standing in, in, in erosion, smiling, trying to fake you out. Makes you think that everything's all right. I'm just good. And I'm just spiritually erosion. You do the same thing every week. And you don't even know it. You're dying. Standing firm. It's time to stand firm. It's time to make sure that the ground you are on is solid. Because without solid rock, we will crumble and fall. Are you hearing me, people of God? Oh my God, help me, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Many of us attend church long after our faith has already eroded away. We keep attending church and you don't have a lick of faith. You just come because you don't want to look different. You don't want nobody to know that you have eroded away. We do those things because we are creatures of habit. Oh, this is heavy on my heart today. I know I'm, I'm, we almost had time, but I got to get this out. Will y'all let me get it out? Oh, we are still going through the motions. And physically doing the right things, but our hearts are not involved. Through neglect over time, we have stopped having enthusiasm 
for God and his ways. We have eroded away. Our roots have been cut off. We are not pulling water out. We are not uh, pulling the nutrients out of his word. We are just faking it. Oh, God, help me. Oh, I hope my, my friend is listening to this. Hear me and hear me well. Hallelujah. The fastest road to hell is a gradual one. It's a gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. And Satan knows that our gradual erosion is much more dangerous to us than a full frontal attack. What are you saying? He's not going to come and just bam, hit you to get you to fall. But he's going to put things in front of you where you will subtly erode away. And he knows it's more powerful to attack you subtly on your job, in your home, in your finance, in your body, with your children, in your city. He attacks you subtly. And if he can attack you subtly, he knows that is more powerful than a sudden attack. Because a sudden attack, you get your right says back and you hurry up and get back. But a slow attack of erosion, he hits you piece by piece. Before you know it, this side of the cornerstone has fallen off. And before you know it, there's a crack in the building right here. And before you know it, you're hanging out of church. Before you know it, everybody is wrong and you're the only one right. Before you know it, because uh, Deacon Cobra looked over here and didn't smile at me, Deacon Cobra don't like me. Before you know it, everything has turned to a fault. Oh, the only thing that has happened to you is that you have spiritually eroded. I can't finish this. Hallelujah. Insignificant little battles bleed us dry. You talked about me. Erosion. You didn't speak to me. Erosion. I saw you do something that the pastor said don't do, so now I'm so hurt. Erosion. I don't care what you see somebody else do. Don't let it have an effect on your spiritual walk. It's time to stand firm. I can't finish this. But there are three things I want to leave you with. I'm going all the way to the end. On today. Three things. Go ahead and play softly. If you didn't shout, you should have shouted earlier. <laughs> My heart is for your soul. Do you understand? I said this earlier. People are dying. People that we never expected. And how dare we walk around in an eroded state when we have a chance for the nutrients. I went back out and looked at the tree. Me and the wife looked at it again yesterday. I don't have finance right now to get the tree cut down. And the stump pulled up. But I looked at it, I said, Trina, look. And way back up there in the center there, I said, there's a little bit of green. I said, it may have a chance. I said, so I'm going to do some things. I'm going to get online and see what needs to be done. I'm going to put a water hose out there and get water. I'm going to get my miracle grow and stir up my little concoction and do what, and I'm going to pour, try to get that tree revived. Do you know I'm looking at you? Many of you, you're all brown. Your leaves are withered and dried up, but there's a little 
bit of green somewhere. <laughs> oh. And as long as my tree is standing firm and the roots are still there, it has a chance. As long as you are standing firm.
How many of you believe that God is faithful? It's time to stand firm. Everybody stand to your feet if you can. Bishop Hines and Bishop Sheard. I can't do all those things. We may have a lot of flaws. I don't think we got one or two. There are things that we need to grow better in. But oh, if you are in this church and you still go to hell, it's your fault. And if you do not know how to grab hold of God and keep him as the center of your, Lord, your life, it's your fault. It's your fault. And all I ask you to do, all I ask you to do all I ask you to do is make a commitment today that I am going to stand firm. Can I get a show of hands? I want you to put it in, let, put your hands up if you're going to stand firm. I pray it's 100%. It looks pretty good. Stand firm. After you've done everything you can do, you got to stand firm. You hear me? After. You got to stand firm. You must stand firm. Is there anyone that does not know Christ Jesus as your Savior? And you would like to make him your Savior, your Lord and Savior today. If you are in the house, come now. You do not know him and you don't know him. You need him. Come now. 